today is August 26, and the person with me today, Dr. Atul Gupta, needs no introduction here at Silver Cross. In his role as Medical Director of Infection Prevention, he has been our rock and our true north throughout this entire pandemic, providing us with real information and advice that makes sense, helping to keep our patients safe and each other safe, and um, making sure that we take all the precautions to stop the spread of the pandemic. So why don't we start with talking about what's going on in our environment, and specifically the state of Illinois. So in Illinois, we've been doing pretty well overall. Um, our cases are going up slowly, but our percent positivity hasn't really increased significantly. Um, we're still under 5%, which is very, very good. Really, anything under 8% is good. Um, we're doing a lot more testing in Illinois. So we're finding a lot of the cases earlier, and we're able to keep people from spreading it uh, more effectively. A lot of our cases are in the, the under 30 age group, um, which makes sense, are the ones going out um, a lot more than everybody else. Our elderly populations are doing really well. The percent positivity right. in the elderly population right. is very low. Nursing homes are doing a phenomenal job of keeping outbreaks under control. Prisons have been doing well. So in the Midwest especially, um, Illinois is, uh, is, is doing better than, than all the other states right. in the Midwest right now. But then we take a look at our community, Will County, and we've got, we've got some issues here. Locally, unfortunately, in Will County, our rates are above 8% now for the last several days. And uh, the, the plan from the state the state very clearly, if you stay above 8% for three days in a row, then they'll have to start pulling back. You know, we had some, some large gatherings that probably started it, and uh, then once the virus gets into the community, it spreads very easily. Um, so we still need to be very vigilant about avoiding large gatherings, wearing our mask, um, especially when you're indoors with other people. Yeah. Um, so the restrictions in Will County start today, don't they? Including no indoor dining, um, gatherings has to be, have to be less than 25, Bar stools six feet apart, bar stools closing at 11. This, this is tough for our county. Yeah, and uh, um, the, the plan from the state does say that if we don't get the numbers less than 8% in 14 days, the more restrictions will be coming. So, you know, we, we all have a role to play in this. And, you know, if all of us want to keep our economy going and keep our access to restaurants and things available, we have to be very, very vigilant about things. Yeah, yeah. And how about the hospital here at Silver Cross? We're doing... We're holding our own, aren't we? Silver Cross has been doing well. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we have a steady uh, stream of new COVID patients coming in. They don't seem to be quite as sick as they were before, thankfully. Um, we're able to treat them better. Um, we uh, uh, have, uh, you know, kind of fallen into our, our new normal, really, mm -hmm. uh, with our COVID. We still have our negative pressure unit open to keep our staff and patients safe when they're here. Um, and we've been able to, to keep up with uh, having enough PPE sure. and medications and staff, and so for now, again, as long as as long as the the whole community um, helps us out um, in keeping the rates from going up any higher, yeah. we're doing okay. Good to know. Well, um, a lot of people have personal questions, a lot of confusion about testing and what to do. So let me run through some of these and, and let's get your advice. So the first question we often get is, how do I know if I've been exposed, and what counts as an exposure? Um, this is one of the biggest questions that I've been getting asked. Um, and exposure is right now is defined technically as uh, being within six feet of someone who is known or suspected to have COVID for more than 15 minutes. Um, so, uh, you know, passing someone in the grocery store would not count. Um, spending a few minutes at the door talking to a neighbor would not count. Um, these, uh, these exposures tend to be mostly uh, in the workplace uh, or at home with family members. Okay. Um, uh, certainly with the, with the younger uh, uh, people getting exposed, a lot of that is in social gatherings, um, even outdoors. Mostly these exposures are going to be happening indoors, but if you're outdoors for long periods of time with other people without masks and very close by, you can be exposed as well. Okay. And then, you know, if I've been exposed, what, what do I do? So if you're exposed um, and you have no symptoms, um, the uh, current recommendation is to self-quarantine at home for 14 days. If you're, if you're known to be exposed to someone who had COVID or was highly suspected of having COVID, quarantining at home for 14 days means basically at home, you avoid contact with other people 
And when you have to be with other people, you wear a mask and try to limit the exposure as much mm -hmm. as possible. And you monitor for symptoms every day, fever, cough, vomiting, body aches, fatigue. Uh, these can all be symptoms of COVID. If you develop symptoms, um, then seeking out testing would be appropriate at that time. Okay, so I heard you say, just because you're exposed doesn't mean you have to get a test. You watch for symptoms, but you do isolate yourself. You quarantine. Exactly. Okay, that's really, really helpful. Okay, so what if I've been exposed and I'm asymptomatic, I'm home, I'm quarantined. Day five, I develop symptoms. What do I do? So if you've been quarantining at home and avoiding contact with your family and other people you live with, and after several days you test positive, then um, you uh, would go into, instead of quarantine, you'd go into isolation for COVID. And the isolation for COVID is 10 days from the first day that you have symptoms um, or 24 hours after your symptoms go away, whichever is longer. Um, the one Can symptom... you say that again? Yeah. 10 days. So once you, be, let's say you have a fever on the first of the month okay. and that, that's your first symptom. And then um, you, uh, uh, isolate for 10 days so until the 10th you would isolate at home just like you have been with the quarantine um, and then if you have been symptom free at that point for more than 24 hours then you're done with your isolation okay if you still have symptoms at that point then you continue isolation until you no longer have symptoms for 24 hours okay so it's really about symptoms and what you do right. you yeah once you're once you actually have COVID disease, then it becomes about the symptoms. Um, the one symptom that, that doesn't count for, for isolation is a lingering cough. Okay. A lot of people can have a cough for months after any viral infection. Sure. And so just having that cough doesn't mean you're still contagious. Okay. All right. That's very helpful because people are really, really confused. So um, if I am exposed, could I get tested like a few days into my isolation to let me go back to work or do I have to do the full 14 days? Um, you can't, unfortunately. Um, okay. And we do get this question a lot, too. Uh, most people will develop symptoms within the first few days, um, five to seven days of being exposed. And so a lot of people uh, would like to get tested after that time and say, I don't have symptoms, I'm testing negative, I don't need to do 14 days. Unfortunately, the symptoms and, and the testing uh, may not show up for 10 to 14 days after okay. you've been exposed. So. Getting tested, you might do it just for peace of mind, but it does not shorten the quarantine okay. period. And it doesn't really you to go back to work. Okay. And then what if I test positive and could I get tested like, um, or what, if I test positive, when would be the right time to get the next test? Um, there is no right time to get the next test. So right now, the official recommendation is once you test positive for COVID, you go through the isolation. When you've completed your isolation, you're no longer contagious and repeating the test doesn't change anything. The reason for that is now we've got a lot more information about COVID disease and how it, uh, how it shows up in testing in the body than, than we had before. What happens when you get the infection is the virus enters your upper airways and then it moves down into the lungs. And when you're symptomatic, you're expelling a lot of that virus into the, into the environment. After your symptoms have resolved and you're done with your isolation, the test can stay positive for up to three months. Oh my, that's right. the first I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if, if, uh, if you're still testing positive at that point, you're no longer contagious. And we know that because they've done studies trying to find live virus in the secretions of people who have recovered from COVID, and they can't after about 10 days. Okay. What happens is your body kills the virus, and then um, uh, it, it expels small fragments of, of dead virus. And you can still pick those up in the testing but you're not contagious at that point. So repeating the testing can actually give you a false positive um, and uh, uh, make you stay in isolation longer than you would need to otherwise. But uh, we know for sure at that point you're no longer contagious. Okay, so the key is 10 days. That's right. Got it, got it. And what if uh, I, my son decides to go to Mexico because he got a great deal? Yeah. Like what will happen to him when he comes back? Uh, there used to be a recommendation from the CDC that any international travel would require 14 days of quarantine at home when you got back. That, re that recommendation was recently removed. Oh. <laughs> My interpretation of that is, uh, is, is, is not so flattering. Um, I think it's simply because the United States is actually doing worse than most countries. Uh -huh. So traveling to another country doesn't really put you at more risk. You know, we have uh, in the U.S. 4% of the world's population 
in 25% of the world's cases. Oh, that's an alarming statistic. Yeah. So at this point, travel to another country uh, doesn't doesn't make you uh, enter quarantine when you get back. Now, that being said, of course, people should still be safe when they travel. Yes. And they should, if they've traveled somewhere and feel like they probably were exposed or were in large indoor gatherings, they should probably still self-quarantine to be safe. Okay. I'll tell them not to go. <laughs> um, so there are some new things in the news. There's a saliva test, and there's a lot of talk about vaccines, which make us more optimistic about the future. So let's talk about those two things. What, yeah. are, you, what are your thoughts? Uh, the saliva test is really a great breakthrough. Um, the main benefit of the saliva test is that it can be done on large numbers of people. Results come back within six hours, um, and it doesn't require large amounts of raw materials to do. That's been one of the big uh, hangups with testing in Illinois here locally, nationwide, right. is the chemicals that are required to do most of these tests are in short supply. The saliva testing doesn't rely on those things. Uh, right now, the University of Illinois is doing it, and they're having really good success with it. It's, we don't have it here locally yet, um, but uh, some other universities have developed their own saliva tests, so I think that'll be the next big breakthrough in testing. And what, what are your thoughts about a vaccine? Uh, also optimistic. Um, there, are, as most people know now, there are several vaccine yeah. candidates um, in phase three trials, uh, which is the last phase of a trial before a vaccine is approved. The vaccines uh, so, so far have been showing both excellent safety and effectiveness oh, profiles. Good. Good. And so the, the hope and the expectation I think right now is that one or more vaccines should be approved sometime around the end of the year. Um, now having a vaccine approved doesn't mean it's widely available right, right away. Right. Some of them are being manufactured right now in anticipation of approval. So, you know, we would hope that within the next, you know, eight to nine months, uh, we would have available vaccine, uh, at least relatively widely, probably at first distributed to, to, to frontline workers sure. and people at high risk. Um, but hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic by that, that, that by next summer, um, we may have a vaccine relatively widely available. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Last question. Should we get flu shots? Of course. Everyone should get a flu shot. Um, the flu shot will will reduce your likelihood of, uh, of obviously getting the flu, but also your likelihood of ending up in the hospital with the flu, um, and again overwhelming the hospital system uh, with uh, with uh, other respiratory infections. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough. It's just you you have led us through a very very difficult time, and we are all extremely grateful. My thank pleasure. you. Thanks.